defying death, jumps from mules in motion, global travels, and an ancient mummy. Just a taste of what's to come. Allow me to introduce you to our main character, Hiram Bingham III, the real-life Indiana Jones. To start off with, little Hiram was born in Hawaii. He had come from an old missionary family. They had played a huge part in the American conquest of Hawaii. His Hiram's grandfather, Hiram Bingham, I know, but just kept handing down the name, he had helped to create a written system for the Hawaiian language. It's worth noting that his grandfather's values may have influenced young Hiram, which means that as historians, we need to think carefully before we just evaluate his writings. Anyways, Hiram went to Yale and studied history. He quickly became an expert in South American history. He was particularly interested in Simon Bolivar, a famous general. Because of his work, he received a call from the Secretary of State, Elihu Root. Root asked him if he would represent America at the Pan American Science Conference, which was in 1908. You see, Root's boss was Teddy Roosevelt, who had made some South Americans mad with the whole Panama Canal and, you know, armed American interventions. So Root kind of thought it was time to showcase a softer side of America. And what better way to do that than a scientific conference? Well, the conference was miserable. It rained for the entire time. Root was cornered by the governor, well, the prefect of the Apurimac province. This was a guy named J.J. Nunez. Nunez had heard rumors of buried treasure in the old city of Chacacuro. At first, Hiram didn't want to go. But he remembered wor Root's words, endeavor in every way to please officials. And so he agreed to go. It was a major city of the Incan Empire, and it was the last city that really stood against the Spanish. It was heavily fortified, 3,000 feet above the sea level. Chacacura was not unknown. Indigenous people had visited for thousands of years, and even a few Europeans had come to see it. However, no one had done an in-depth search of it. Bing, bring, sorry, Bingham was quick to point out that he was not an archaeologist, and technically, he had no idea what he was doing. It was hard to reach this area. The rains had destroyed the already difficult roads. Bingham wrote, We commenced a descent that for torturous and narrow escapes be anything that we'd ever seen. At one point, they encountered a rope bridge that was barely held together. They inched their way across it in the cloudy, foggy, misty weather. At another point, Bingham's mule actually fell from a slope down a cliff. Luckily, it landed on a ledge, but Bingham had to climb down and make his mule jump from the ledge back to safety. Again, zero visibility because of the fog. At last, they reached Chakahiro. Bingham immediately realized that he had no idea what to do. Luckily, he had brought along a book. It was called Hints to Travelers. It told him to measure the area and take photos. However, the rain ruined the photos. Bingham found no gold, but he did find several corpses. He wrote that mummies are rarely intact because of the moisture in the area. However, these ones had been covered in stones, and they were well preserved. He did describe picking up one skull and feeling it disintegrate into his fingers. Again, he's not an archaeologist, folks. He returned with his findings, leaving a very disappointed J.J. Nunes, and he felt a further need to explore. Eventually, he will be one of the people who visits Machu Picchu and does a scientific uh, recording of it. He writes two extremely successful books on his travels. 